This is the untold story of the explosion of child malaria deaths in Africa. We estimate that there are more than a million deaths each year, which is uh, like seven jumbo jets going down each day, and 90% of those deaths are in children. 30 years ago, malaria, for most children, was no more dangerous than a dose of the flu. What has happened to turn malaria into Africa's biggest child killer? It is one of the greatest atrocities of our time. It is mass murder. Honestly, it's a form of terrorism against public health. And I'm right at the points where malaria kills children. So, so, so I feel it on a daily basis, and I know that this is the truth. This is about a very different battle against malaria, one very few people want to talk about. It is a battle against greed, corruption, and a murderous global racket in fake pharmaceutical drugs. But only now is the extraordinary damage caused by this racket coming to light. And it affects everyone who takes a medicine. If we allow politicians to continue saying we didn't know, we don't know, when the catastrophe comes, they'll have somewhere to hide. We've got to remove that hiding place and ensure that they understand this has got to be dealt with in a very powerful way now. This tablet contains the world's last effective drug to treat malaria. All the other drugs have now failed because of resistance in the malaria parasites. This drug, called artemisinin, is all that now stands between Africa's 500 million malaria sufferers and disaster. Resistance to the artemisinins, as I've explained, would be an absolute catastrophe for our current attempts to try and control malaria. And there's another problem. Someone is making deadly fakes of these artemisinin drugs and all the other anti-malarial drugs on a vast industrial scale. Here we have two identical pills. Imagine your, your child having had a convulsion, temperature of 40 degrees, and the choice really between these two medications is the choice between life and, and death. They are, to all intents and purposes, the same. But these tablets beg another question for the scientists who are trying to save artemisinin. Could there be a link between the fake drugs and all the genuine drugs that have failed? To find out means going back 30 years. In the 60s and 70s, when we were young, when we had malaria, our parents would just give us money to go and buy chloroquine. You buy chloroquine, take it, by the next day you are back to school. Then something happened to change everything. Today, Dr. Dora Akunili is director of Nigeria's National Food and Drug Regulation Body, known as NAFDAQ. The London-trained pharmaceutical scientist has become a crime fighter. In a corrupt, violent society, she has created the world's first effective force to fight the horrors of the fake drug racket. And in doing so, she came on a disturbing coincidence. Fake drugs were first noticed in Nigeria in 1968. It was when the fake drug racket broke out that people started dying like rats from malaria. People didn't used to die a lot from malaria. Professor Nick White is one of the world's top malaria scientists. He and colleagues have been investigating the rise of fake anti-malarial drugs in Southeast Asia for over 10 years. The question is why is malaria getting worse and not better? 50 years ago it was in retreat and today the number of cases of malaria, the number of people who are dying, mainly children, is increasing. I think it's a medical mystery, uh, but I think, it, I think it's one that might be soluble. 